Hello. 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 <laughs> where's uh, where's where's Phelps? Well, okay, uh, I, locked, I locked him in the shed because I wanted to in interview Simon and Susie. Oh, mm. shame, that's good for us. We love you, Billy. <laughs> that, makes, that makes sense, Billy. You you know you've uh, you know what this is probably better, Danny. We're going to actually go out to talk today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is great. Oh, I don't know. Billy can talk. Yeah, but he's not as bad as his dad. True. I, I get my talking from my dad, so. <laughs> oh, <no>. Good luck. <laughs> right, um, do you want to go oh, and sort out? damn pesky kids. <laughs> How did you get out? Did Have you showed him what T-shirt you've got? <laughs> it is uh, yeah. Simon and Susie T-shirt. Oh, cool. Awesome. <laughs> right, Love met it. me. Get in. Oh, <laughs> you can come and sit here for a little bit if you want. Yeah. Oh. Okay, there we go. Right. Firstly, whilst those two pretend to like each other, um, I'm guessing you've been in the shed for a quite a while. Well, well um, so welcome to our show. <laughs> it's been a while since we've had you both on. Um, I know. It's been a long, long time. Wow. I, I couldn't believe it when I had a quick look. Um, I thought it was, um, you know, in the last six months, but it was November 2018 when we had you both on together. <laughs> Honestly, I'd say it was last year at some point, but... Yeah, time well, flies, eh? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we did manage to get Susie on uh, for her show, but unfortunately, Simon... Um, Susie's the one with all the uh, the techno knowledge, and you couldn't get on because she wasn't with her at the time. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not a techno person. That's her job. It's I'm, not though. No, but she's very good at it, whereas I am not. So that's where clarify that one. <laughs> okay, so before we get on and get talking about the, the new season that's just aired and all that lovely stuff, um, just a little bit of homework. So if you want to follow us on our social media, it's Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, at the handle of Reptile and Chill, or search Reptile and Chill. And for merchandise and for more information, please visit www.reptileandchill.com. Um, but that is about it. I'm not going to ramble on that much. Um, I'm going to leave it to everyone else because I've had enough talking. Um, but basically, if you haven't listened to this before, what we do is we do a live stream every Wednesday at 7 p.m. in the UK, and we have a podcast that goes out every Monday, and that is available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and most other podcasting platforms. So if you do want to find out more about what we do, if you go on our website, and that should be pretty groovy. Um, and on well that done, note, Pat. Mike, do you want to take it away? Well, I just just want to first of all, before we go into sort of like, you know, Nat Geo Wild, Snake City, and and all that. Like, guys, what are you actually doing at the moment? You know, your, your television stars. Are you just like us, stuck in your house and and getting on with the the, the normal stuff that everybody else is? Do you know? Really embarrassing. I started a jigsaw puzzle today, so really rock and roll. <laughs> 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 She um, has actually, and I have not got no patience for that. I won't lie. I can't sit down. I'm, I've got um, OCD, so I've got to be doing something. Whether it's painting, decorating, fixing a fence, uh, the roof, whatever. So I'm DIY man. So I'm busy doing that. Plus, I've got the snakes here, the fish tanks, uh, the other animals. So you know, we've got lots of venomous snakes here that need attending to. So I'm kind of busy with them, catching up on stuff. Got a few breeding prog programs going on, so. But you know, we are we are busy. in isolation. We are in lockdown, as with everyone. We are in the UK at the moment, um, and as with everyone, we're all in the same boat. And I think that's what I've got a really positive attitude. I know it's really horrible times, and mm. I'm not trying to be patronising. But all I'm saying is, we're all in the same boat. We've all got the same mm -hmm. situation. It doesn't matter if you're super wealthy, super poor. We've all it literally in the same boat, and you just got to get on with it. You know, we could sit here <clears throat> moan and groan and complain. There's no point. We're in the same situation. Just get on with it, you know. And it is hard. It's very difficult. And but like I say, just just crack on with it. The sooner we we keep all this up, hopefully it will be ending soon. Gone, so yeah. you know. But yeah. Yeah. Where, 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 where where were you guys when it all started? Were you in the UK or were you over in South Africa? Yeah, we're we were in, in South, South Africa. Africa and we yeah. came back just to be back here. Um, mm -hmm. But they've gone on lockdown. We we're on lockdown. Um, so mm -hmm. literally, it's just no movement with anyone or anything. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? As well, um, I think we sit in our homes and we're like, we just think it's you know, it's just us, but it's not. It's literally the whole entire world. 
Um, yeah. you know, and there's, there's a lot of people already tuning in um, from all over the world. You know, um, we've had Scarlett showing that she loves your show. Um, yeah. Robert f from East London. Um, Casey Newport. There was yeah, yeah, there was some um, Bangladesh. Oh, lovely! Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, Chocolate mustache is here again. <laughs> <laughs> right um guys you need to check out this guy he's got the most awful excuse for a mustache ever and he pops up every show uh he gets him, he's, only, well. he's only young he's trying to grow a mustache bless him um, yeah we've also got this this random nutters tuned in as well uh, this is my sister-in-law thanks for joining us kaz it's yeah. Auntie yeah. Cass. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so um, my uh, brother and sister-in-law, they've got three kids, um, Harrison, Yasmin and Macy. They're massive fans of the show as well. They've been watching um, quite a few of the episodes lately whilst they've been in lockdown, so they wanted to say hi to you guys as well. Uh, hi, guys. Hello. Oh, no. Well, thanks for watching the show. We appreciate it, and we do. We appreciate <laughs> yeah. everyone that tunes in. It really is, you know, brilliant for us. Um, and we just feel very lucky to have this opportunity. Um, I always say this, I feel very lucky to have this platform um, to educate people about snakes. Uh, you know, we hope we convert a lot of people and I know we do. We get a lot of criticism, I know that, and that happens. Um, it is a bit dramatic at times because obviously it is for a TV show, but the main thing is, and I always love to get this across, the main thing is we have converted lots of people to love snakes. And equally, we've converted lots of people not to kill snakes, even better. Um, because, you know, we get lots of fan mail from, uh, I think it's 177 countries the show is shown. Um, yeah. And we get fan mail from all those countries saying, normally I would kill a snake, but because of, mm -hmm. um, you know, your show, I now know if I leave it alone, it will just slither off. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're so grateful to have that opportunity, that platform to educate and save snake lives. So even sitting here tonight, potentially we're saving snakes because yeah. someone's seen one in the yeah. and not killed it. So. Absolutely. That's really good. That is really good. And uh, just going back to what you were saying there, uh, Susie, you know, you do get a little bit of criticism uh, whether people think you're being over dramatic. You have to do that sometimes to get the people to watch. And, 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 and by virtue of doing that, you are then getting people to listen to you to say, you know, do not kill these animals. You know, they can be captured and released. And, you know, they're not all... Um, uh, what a lot of people think they are, especially over in in South Africa, where you know they've been brought up probably to um, be scared and hate these animals because it's the only way you can teach <coughs> their kids to stay away from snakes because they mm -hmm. could potentially get harmed. Yeah, no, definitely. You know, you know what? Back in the day, before there was no cameras, when I was living in South Africa, catching snakes for a living, which what I did for eight years. And there was no cameras, no one around me. A lot of times on my own, sometimes obviously with my ex, but a lot of times on my own, I was catching black marmas, bagging them, going into a property, catching it and leaving immediately. It was quick, quick. And um, there's no cameras or nothing like that. No one to help me, no nothing. And times where things could have gone wrong easily, but the show obviously has to have a bit of drama. But there's drama when you're on your own. That's what I mean. Yeah. There's no cameras. So, do you know, when you're being filmed, it's, it's a bit different, but... <coughs> You know, if something goes wrong, it goes wrong. Luckily, touch wood for me, nothing's ever gone wrong, you know, when catching a snake. Uh, apart, I mean, apart, bite, from, um, apart from there was a small part where it almost went wrong and you were wearing a certain T-shirt as well. I did notice that. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a shame. They did uh, blur it out. Um, but, yeah, well, the biggest captures last year was Simon up a tree catching a black mamba yeah. in a reptile and chill T-shirt. Yay! Well, <laughs> yeah, absolutely um, fantastic. It's quite, it's quite weird, though, because when we watched it, our T-shirt was blurred out. However, I've been sent numerous screenshots where it wasn't. So I think it might have depended on the country it was aired in. I think, I think there were certain yeah. scenes as well where I, it wasn't I should, blurred. I should imagine Disney and Nat Geo Wild um, were probably concerned that our huge production company might yeah. go legal. Copyright, copyright. But it's cool, mate. It's, um, yeah, I've, I've got them. no advice allowed, unfortunately, even for you guys, which, you know, we love you guys. Um, no, no. So, yeah, unfortunately, they blurred it out. We didn't think they would because, it, for, from our understanding, it's all the the big makes, the actual products. 
Um, yeah. So we thought like a reptile group wouldn't be blurred out, but they did, which was unfortunate. Oh, but yeah, very you, unfortunate. Can, you can work it out. But like you say, some places it hasn't been. So you mm. are known internationally. They couldn't <laughs> blur our beautiful faces off from the back of your T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm holding <laughs> under that one. <laughs> Rock up, so... Um, I think a lot of a lot of our people who are probably watching this probably know who you are. Uh, that you you are two nutters that try and catch black mambas. Um, but do you want to go through a basis of kind of like what the show is about and what well, the principle behind it for those who don't know? Yeah, you go through it with the show. Sorry. Principles behind the show. Well, it started off. Oh, it started off. Oh. Principles behind the show. What's it about? Sorry, it broke up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It's about basically the show. If people have never seen the show. Um, I don't know if that was your actual question, we had a bit of break up then, but basically we are removing snakes, uh, all snakes, even if venomous or non-venomous, from people's homes. Um, they, they, I hate the word problem, but there is a problem in South Africa, purely because, and I hate saying the word problem because it's actually humans are the problem, not the snakes, um, but snakes have entered people's homes because of deforestation. Um, people, you know, there's a lot of beautiful areas that we know that have been really full of lush trees and plants. And every year when we go there, it gets knocked down. There's less less trees, less plants and more houses. Mm. Consequently, the snakes end up in people's homes. Um, and that's where we come in. Um, and the, and the, the reason we do it 100% is to save the snakes. Obviously, in turn, we save people. Um, but even harmless snakes, people panic so much. It's crazy. People go and absolutely break down over any snake. Mm -hmm. um, and consequently, harmless snakes get killed as well as venomous. Um, so our job is to educate and remove those snakes. Yeah. Do you know what? It started off very much like that. And we've been very lucky to be able to get through to a lot of people. Not everyone, because it still mm. goes on, as you know. But um, just to educate the children is the most important thing. Because if you don't educate the next generation, you've got no chance. You know, yeah. people are setting their ways to see a snake, they just want it dead. And most of the time, as you guys know, 90% uh, of the time, they're harmless anyway. Mm -hmm. It's horrible yeah. to kill a harmless snake or a venomous snake. But if they're left alone, they'll just obviously go on their own yeah. way. So we've done wonders in that terms. Uh, we've still got a long way to go. And there's fantastic guys out there while we're in the UK doing the same thing. So <laughs> it's it's got across to people. The programme, although some people might not like it, they might say it's over dramatic. The fact is, like I said earlier, I was doing it with no cameras. And yes, I've nearly been bitten hundreds of times, but thankfully nothing. Um, you know, I'm on my own. I go to a call out. I catch a black mamba. I get in a car. Then I get called out again. Then eventually I get home at some time of day. And then I still got to go and release all these snakes. So uh, it's just been wonderful to be able to work with Nat Geo Wild and Earth Touch, our production company, and just to educate the world a little bit about our reptiles. And hopefully they see some kind of outcome. You know, we, we can't cannot keep on killing everything. If you don't mm. like an animal, there's no reason to kill it. Uh, you know, we need them here. They're 100%. part of the food chain. They're part of mm -hmm. life. You know, it's it's so hard to get through to people. And yeah. we're still struggling now. We do our best. But, you know, they always say only good snakes are dead snakes, but they're so far from the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah I've, I've, I've got to admit as well. Very... Oh. No, no, so carry on, carry on. <laughs> no, no, like, ladies um, first. <laughs> Uh, really? Um, one thing that's really important to us as well, um, and this is very close to your heart, I know that, is obviously you guys are very, um, you know, you're, you're very passionate about mental health and you do a lot of work for that. And, I just, you know, we know that. And one thing we love about the show um, is that so many people get in touch with their children that say have, um, a, a, say they're autistic or there's a certain disability. Um, and we've had so much fan mail from people to say their child's been autistic and even been the extent that they don't even speak don't even want to talk they've watched the show um, and now found a passion with snakes and we've converted so many children especially those with learning difficulties as well and that really i just love it we get so much fan mail about that and i think that's amazing and um sort of lots of hellos from different around the world that's cool from mm -hmm. italy i hope you're safe <laughs> in italy um you know and, and i love that and even we had a, a message once from a child that's being bullied um, because he was autistic and um, the kids were saying that he's different and they were taking, you know, they were sort of bullying him. Um, and then he turned around and said, well, Simon and Sue are different. They've got mm -hmm. pink hair and they're tattooed, mm -hmm. you know, so I actually think it's quite cool mm -hmm. to be different. So to also have that aspect as well as saving snakes, which is, you know, amazing to actually have an influence on people in a positive way with, you know, perhaps they're insecure or as mm -hmm. I say, you know, they're being bullied. I love that fact. I absolutely, you know, amazing. On a more so mental level, yeah. 
And, and you know what? I think a lot of people that keep reptiles can probably relate to that. We've all been, even as grown-ups, you know, people think we're a little bit different. They think it's a bit of a joke that we keep reptiles. Still to this day, you know, uh, I do. Uh, some of the people at work, oh, what are you keeping reptiles for? And, uh, you know, we've always been treated a little bit different. So it is I, I am exactly the same as that. I like to say it's good to be different. If everybody was the same in the world, you know, it would be a very boring place. Mm -hmm. Definitely. We've had a few yeah. questions. We've had a few questions come through um, before we carry on. Yeah, go uh, so Julie Johnson wants to know, have you ever been to Australia? To Australia? Have yeah, have we have. You I have. have. I have. 1997. I have been to Australia. Been all Did the way around it, actually. Okay. Did you do herping while she was out story. there? You've got a really good story about a sunken boat. <laughs> yeah, if you want to hear a good story, I was in Australia in 1997. I was working as a fish collector for aquarium trade. So I was a diver and I would catch the aquarium fish for the aquarium trade. So I was out doing a week's uh, trip at sea and we'd go out about 50 miles and at a place called Argincourt Reef which is uh, the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, mm -hmm. off Cairns. And um, doing my usual dive, I was on my own as usual, because we always dive on our own, because you scare the fish otherwise. And the idea is to catch the fish by nets only, no chemicals, nothing like that. And then we would take them back when we finish and get them back to the pet shops to export around the world. But uh, anyway, our boat sunk. So it went down very quickly and my airline went off because I was diving on hooker, which means a massive airline from the boat to where I'm diving. So it was about 300 foot airline and I was down 22 meters at the time and all of a sudden the air went off. So I started to make my way to the surface. I didn't know what was going on. And when I got to the surface, eventually uh, there was no boat. The boat had gone. It was now on the bottom. <laughs> so, not the best place to be, 50 miles away from land. Um, but yeah, we were hopping around. There was three of us. They eventually all came up. There was three of us at the time. And uh, eventually, after several hours, about seven hours, a boat uh, taking other scuba divers went past us about two kilometers away or a mile and a half away and uh, spotted us because we were waving at them. And they ha happened to pick us up and rescued us and um literally about a week later they managed to salvage the boat but it obviously got ripped to pieces by the currents and the waves mm -hmm. and everything yeah we're lucky to be alive uh it was getting towards sunset and i was thinking there's gonna be sharks coming soon i'm not scared of sharks got big respect for them but i don't want to be in the ocean at 10 o'clock at night or 12 o'clock <laughs> at night not doing great whites and tigers and zambezis so yeah i was quite lucky you was you was lucky to be spotted That's as well two stories <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but have you ever watched, uh, what's it called? Um, is it Big Blue or Deep Blue? There's actually a story deep, where deep, it's deep called the Lon Lonigans. Yeah, yes. The couple that got lost, well, the couple that got lost at the time was about a year after we sunk, I think. And anyway, cut a long story. They, The company that rescued us on their boat were the ones that lost them. There was a massive court case, so they, wow. they unfortunately went to prison because it was negligence. They lost two divers. They drove away or took the boat away before everyone was on the board of the boat. And uh, they were the same company that rescued us. The Lonigans were got lost at sea, and they'd never know what happened to them. So wow. we got rescued, Incredible. they got lost. So wow. it's, it's, it's worth noting... Um, uh, everybody probably thinks that Simon was born and went straight into TV. Simon has done that many jobs <laughs> over the years. Um, a lot to do with, you know, his, his passions, animals, and and to keep him doing that, he's literally done tattooing, painting, decorating, diving, uh, so a many barber. different jobs. I believe he was a nail, nail lady at one point as well. <laughs> <laughs> you can't hear. <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, um, the other questions that we've got as well is uh, da, 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 from Holly Clapham. We love the show. My eight-year-old wants a pet snake. Can you recommend a good first snake? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's great she wants a snake. We love that. And we do encourage people to have them as pets. They make fantastic pets. Um, the best starter is, I always say, a corn snake. I don't know if you guys agree with me. Um, but they're great because they're, they're friendly. They like to come out docile and they're just great i mean people always seem to recommend ball pythons uh, or royal pythons and um, mm, they tend better. to ball up and they're not really interactive Does someone disagreeing with me here <laughs> i don't know no you, no, you said no. you said ball, ball python, ball python. <laughs> you, we, we was about <laughs> to boot you off you know what? i'm so used to the south africa and that 
um, <laughs> but no, sorry, the royal python. Um, <laughs> but you know, I think because they ball up, it can for children it can be quite boring. But for for something they can really interact with, the corn snake is always a great starter snake, and they're usually really good feeders, uh, very docile. So we, you know, we think they're great. Mm -hmm. We always we always recommend. Don't agree. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, there is certain species that are good for people just getting into this, the, the hobby. But what we always say is do plenty of research because, uh, you know, oh, you're going to potentially have that animal for 20, 30 years. So, yeah. you know, do all your research, find out it's the one that you want uh, and, and then go from there. Yeah, and I think if you are looking to get your first reptile, uh, a good place is to get get involved, talk to other keepers, and uh, you know, ask loads of questions. And we are more than welcome. But everyone is welcome to join our community group on Facebook. Which, if you type in reptile into your community group, join up there. Any questions that you've got, if we don't know the answers, we'll put put forward someone that you know who does know the answer. Um, the other one questions we've got is from Lisa New. No, that's not. Li People keep commenting. Ah, here we go. The comments, is, the comments are coming in too quick for you, Hoss. Yeah, yeah. yeah keep missing. What is your favourite snake? Favourite snake? Oh, my favourite snake. Oh, yeah, it's a tough one. It really is, because I've got so many. Um, favourite snake? That's, I'll probably have to go with maybe Bitus nasicornis, the river jack, or rhino uh, viper. I hope, I, hope, I hope Ambrose is not listening. No, oh, BTS. Guys, they love them. <laughs> BTS, BTS. Yeah, we, we've we've got a friend. When he's drunk, he just screams BTS constantly. At everyone, that's all he cares about is BTS. <laughs> yeah, he's um, he's literally he's literally walked up to people and doesn't even know them and goes, "Do you like BTS?" Screams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's mad. Right, okay. Um, so there to... was there was another question that came through. Uh, well. Phil Lilly, oh, you, saw, you saw the show where you had to pay to take a python away. Was that as scary as it looked on the show? Yes, <laughs> and that's why we paid up. <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was a very very weird situation. That was season two. Um, we got a call out. It was like I don't know four in the morning, and this guy said there was a massive python by his house, you know, by his home. And so when we got out there, by the time we got out there. They said, oh, no, it's gone, it's gone. But they were very funny. They were quite quick to get rid of us. And um, we were like, are you sure? Do you need our help? And, that, and we, we spent hours driving there. It was quite far out. Spent hours driving there. They said, no, 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 it's fine. It's go no, no, just go, just go. It's fine. As we got back in our car, our director was saying, look, guys, this is really weird. It's, it's fact he phoned you panicking. Now he's quick to get rid of you. What's going on here? Um, so I think we should investigate. And he said, even if they've, it sounds awful, even if they've chopped it up, you know, we want your emotions for TV. We want to film this. So they, our, our company said, like, just persist. Let's just see what happens and can we find this snake? Um, so we did go back and they did have the snake. There was a snake, a, a, a massive rock python. Um, and, and it is a true Zulu belief. And we have to respect this belief. They believe that when a, a, a rock python visits them, it's their ancestors um and it's, it's a huge spiritual belief so as, as horrible as it sounds we just have to walk away because you cannot disrespect their belief mm -hmm. uh, it's a huge community so we just had to leave them however and, and he said it was his grandfather he believed it was his grandfather visiting him so we just literally had to walk away mm -hmm. however the next morning same kind of time 4 a.m we got a phone call from him saying his grandfather is eating his chickens. <laughs> so, yeah, can we come along and take the snake? So we were like, yeah, absolutely no problem. You know, that's what we wanted to do anyway. Uh, and bear in mind, they're a protected species. It's very difficult, very tricky situation. So we did go back. And then the other difficult thing for us, and it's very hard to say all this without offending anyone, um, to some people, um, a, a rock python, a big rock python, can make a lot of money, sadly dead. Um, mm. for its skin, it's mooty, which means medicine, uh, for the flesh itself. There's so many financial gains from a big snake. So when we said we were taking it away, they felt, I, I believe they felt they were going to lose out on some money by us just taking it. So we had to pay for that snake. Now, again, it's not the, it's not the ethical thing to do. It's not the right thing to do, but we literally were in a rock and a hard place. Yeah. We would have to either pay and leave with the snake or not pay and not leave with the snake. So we actually had to pay for it. It was really difficult. It was very difficult. 
Um, so it's very difficult for us, very difficult decision for us. Um, and bear in mind, what I don't know if you could see it all on camera, but there was lots and lots of people there. And if we peed them off in any way, we would not have got that snake. So um, we had to pay for it, unfortunately. So we had to go. But yeah, so it was not a great situation, very tricky. Yeah, it was a bit hectic. And the crowds actually can gather very quickly, as you can imagine, in a rural area where they don't want some, someone or something being removed. So basically what happened, a short story, was they, it could have turned quite violent and um, lucky it didn't. We got to speak to the guy again and um, we managed to take the snake away. We just gave him like some beer money. He wanted some party money for his friends and family. So <laughs> we actually gave him like 20 pounds, 25 pounds and uh, he had a little beer night with his family. I mean, actually went back and took the snake away. So it was, it was all fine. It got, it got sorted out. But um, as you can imagine, when you're in an area where... Sometimes you're very welcome and it can turn unwelcome. You don't know, you know, it's, yeah. it's one of those things. So anyway, we got away with the snake and that was that. Mm, fantastic. And the, the crowds do get very excited very quickly. Um, I know there's one episode where you're trying to rescue, you're trying to rescue a snake and you can't actually hear each other because the crowd was just so loud. Oh yeah. Yeah. The boom slung. Um, yeah. That was crazy. We really, it was, Simon and I got split up. We were two sides. Um, and yeah, people were just screaming. We absolutely couldn't yeah. hear. And Simon had the snake whisperer with him. Yes. Yeah, he was a great help. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm not even going to try and pronounce this lady's surname because I'm Nadu. awful. Is it Nadu? So yeah, Vanessa yeah. Nadu. I would have said Nadu, but Nadu. Uh, do you guys carry anti-venom when you're on call? Yeah. A really common question we get a lot um and the answer is no but yes <laughs> okay so we have a supply of anti-venom but we can't carry it with us in our in our snake car um because it has to be refrigerated yeah we do have like a certain amount we can but it's, it's got to be kept obviously at the right condition so mm. but the other thing is yeah. we cannot administer anti-venom ourselves it has to be done <laughs> by a medical professional. Now, a lot of, I know a lot of people tuning in are already familiar with snakes and stuff, but if you haven't, um, the anti-venom itself has got venom. And um, by by giving us administering ourselves, it has to be done in a very controlled medical environment. Mm -hmm. And also there's a risk of anaphylaxis. Um, anti-venom is made from horse serum. A lot of people are anaphylactic with that. So for that reason, um, you know, again, it has to be done in a very, very controlled hospital environment. However, before every season, before we film every season, all of us, myself, Simon, all of the crew that we have with us, we go on uh, Mike Perry, a very famous guy in the reptile industry for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, we go on his first aid course. Um, he's a brilliant guy, very, very knowledgeable. He milks snakes for a living, that's what he does. Yeah, he milks snakes for a living and he milks it for the, the med medicinal reasons. Medical, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we do a first aid course with him and we cover every scenario, every type of toxin, every type of... Uh, area we will be bitten what would you do in that situation so we always get a refresher first aid call so we're all very clued mm -hmm. up including cpr so worst case scenario for us would be a black mamba bite that would be a cpr situation um, mm -hmm. we're cpr trained we're completely clued up we also carry adrenaline um i'm seriously anaphylactic to snakes and venom so yeah. on trade um, so for that reason <laughs> we carry anti-venom with us oh, sorry uh, carry um, adrenaline with us yeah. So, you know, again, if we're in a situation where I get spat at or even a harmless herald snake can set me off, uh, we've got the adrenaline ready to go. So we're, we're completely clued up. We're all, it's, all, it's all controlled. As much as it looks pretty hectic, all of the crew know what to do. We've got access to anti-venom. Um, and the protocol would be that, you know, say we are bitten, we would find the hospital, say we're on our way. We've got the anti-venom. You know, this is it. But so Susie. far, so good. <laughs> we have Susie. Susie, <laughs> can I ask a question? Um, do you have to take the uh, that that with you when you go um, to a restaurant with Simon and he has anything off the fish menu? Oh, sorry, can you repeat that? It broke up then. Sorry, did you have uh, some trouble with Simon when he ate some dodgy prawns and he had a reaction? What I was saying was, oh. you have to... <laughs> <laughs> of all the animals that nearly killed Simon, it wasn't prawn. <laughs> 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 Do you know, I even lied in hospital, when we were in hospital, 
and people were saying to me, what snake has he been bitten by? And I'd be like, right, okay, shall I lie here? <laughs> what can <laughs> I, I say? Out he was bitten by a snake or just say the truth, it was a prawn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say one thing every time that a red a, a spitting cobra is on a, any form of like episode that you guys are on it always seems to be Susie that gets spat at like, and you, you, you've you got the reaction as well um, like Simon's nowhere to be seen I think Simon's secretly, secretly trying to do something here always, <laughs> it, it, every time it's Susie uh, <laughs> I wonder that too so, so I, I put her in the firing line yeah. <laughs> both both ends those both ends though Simon. <laughs> either spat at or poo done. But if he does that, I'll make him a prawn sandwich. Kill a sandwich. Oh shit. Okay. Do okay. So um. I don't think uh, there is some like a prawn. So uh, oh, prawn. Uh, Julie Johnson <laughs> would like to know. Very well. Yeah, he's a good lad. Uh, <clears throat> Julie Johnson would like to know, what's the biggest snake you've caught? Biggest snake we've ever caught? Rock, uh, python? rock python, about three and a half metres, or venomous wires, 3.4 metre black marble. See, that, that's like... That's an incredible... 3.3 metre, ma too much mamba. I can do, <laughs> I can do with it like a little one. No, you can um, No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Big snake. Three point four meter mamba's a big snake. Really, he's a big snake. Mamba's, um, God, you're going to hate me for this now. Mamba's, are what I like to call nope ropes, <laughs> like, <laughs> like they're they're beautiful and they're fantastic. I've been in the room once with a black mamba. Uh -uh. <laughs> not, not, not for me. Leave it to the professionals. Definitely leave it to the professionals. They're just they're so quick, <laughs> aren't they? So so quick. If you ever want to see a they're big so man like Hoss squeak. Black Mamba. No centipedes right? on worse. <laughs> right, black, um, black Mambas make Hoss squeak. So, who looks after the snakes uh, in South Africa when you're at home? Or are they all in the wild? What do you mean by that? Oh. Yep. So, when we go away, who looks after the snakes? Is that correct? Yeah. South Africa. So, um... Yeah, he looks after the snakes in South Africa. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's some amazing snake catchers out in South Africa that we work alongside with. Yeah. So uh, Jason Arnold is one of them, and also Neville and Helen. Um, and normally, um, what we do when we go when we're back here, their number is given all the time to help out with call outs. Um, they help us, we help them, um, and they're brilliant. They're very admirable snake catchers. Mm -hmm. But but you haven't got yeah, any. A personal collection out in Af in Africa that some people thought you may have. It's a bit oh, delayed. Sorry, you, you haven't got a personal collection out in um, Africa. Sorry, was that you know, breaking up again? You can. Asked you on it. Um, <laughs> on try the, I think there's that many people joined in. It's just kind of gone. Mike was saying you don't yeah, have a personal collection in South Africa. Oh, I don't know. Sorry, we are struggling to hear that. All of you are breaking up now. Uh, <laughs> so, put the question Danny, back up. So, question someone back needs up. to pedal the bike quicker. Um, hang on, hang on. I can type it. Two seconds. Yeah. No, can't hear. No, sorry, can't hear. Hang on. Oh, and you've all stalled on us. No, oh. Hang on, you're, hang on. You're both going to put the question up. I can see it. Ah, no, go questions. away. Read questions. <laughs> yeah, we're saying Neville's awesome. Neville is awesome. Okay, t look down. Do you Roll have down. a personal snake collection in SA? Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> um, Used to have. Because we don't live there, and the only snakes we keep or catch or ones from the wild. So what we do, we catch them and release them. You can go on. Yeah, I mean, I, when I'd lived in SA permanently, I had lots of snakes, about 40. I was uh, actually a big breeder of black mambas and green mambas. Uh, I bred them every single year consecutively. Um, and the ones I did breed, I let go uh, back into the wild. Uh, but while we're here in the UK, we do have snakes. We have got venomous snakes uh, upstairs, actually. Um, yeah, we're current DWA license holders. So... We have mambas, cobras, we have uh, 
pit vipers, we have saw scale vipers, rattlesnakes. We've got a, about 25 snakes upstairs. So we've, we're always around snakes and working with snakes every single day. Um, do you have any other animals at home? I think the question now was Harrison, Yasmin and Macy want to know how many different pets you have at home. Uh, we do actually, I think someone just mentioned the snakes we keep at home. Um, but we also have normal pets. We have two dogs. Yeah. Uh, we have Buddy and Tyler. Uh, and bless Tyler. She had us in hospital or vets on Sunday evening with an emergency operation. <laughs> so that's what we needed in lockdown. Yes. Um, yeah, that's and then we've also got meerkats. I keep meerkats. I've had them for 50, uh, almost 15 years. Wow. Um, what? Very complicated. I don't, I don't recommend them as pets. Um, but, you know, I've been in a little meerkat pack for 15 years. Yeah. And um, we have spiders, frogs, tarantulas. Fish. Fish, snapping turtle, macaw parrots. Oh, you name it. We've got quite a few. Yeah. And then we, when we go what? away, we have to have uh, animal sitters. So, yeah, quite quite difficult. Yeah, Me meerkats um, aren't as friendly as you think. Oh. So from Paisley. Paisley. How long have you been catching snakes for? You can answer that. Okay, so I started catching snakes in 2005 in South Africa. Uh, but before that, obviously, I was dealt with snakes and kept snakes, but actually started catching them in 2005. Cool. <laughs> Do you even imagine? <laughs> Need a mantra for that many animals. <laughs> Our sound is really bad now. Shame. That's so uh, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Have we got other questions, or should we try and talk? I can't. We can't hear. Um. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> same question. question. The questions that pass. That was from Paisley. There was another uh, question. Do you live I, in a mansion? I actually think the amount of viewers has like absolutely messed this up. Do we live in a mansion? <laughs> live in a mansion? <laughs> I wish. Oh my gosh. That's the thing. There's a preconception. If you're on TV, you make lots of money. <laughs> no, we don't live in a mansion, unfortunately. I wish we did. Yeah. I'd have more animals, definitely. <laughs> um, but no, we don't live in a mansion. Uh, there was a question uh, about if ever, Simon's ever been bit by a, a venomous snake. Okay. Yeah, I was bitten once. Well, actually twice by the same type of snake, but the first bite was the worst one. The second one wasn't so bad. Uh, it was a copperhead from North America. And um, it wasn't in, uh, over here. It wasn't in America. It was actually in South Africa. So there was no anti-venom. But uh, they don't normally give anti-venom for that snake, but it made me very sick for two weeks. And I received a bite on my index finger, my right hand, and it made me very ill. And lots of swelling, lots of pain. Uh, but eventually it went away, thank God. And that's the only bite, which I'm very lucky as I deal yeah. with, obviously, venomous snakes all the time, every day, hundreds of thousands of things. Um, so I try to be careful as I can. You know, there are accidents that can happen. And that day, it was obviously one of those days I wasn't paying attention maybe as much as I should have been. Mm. And uh, I received a bite. Mm -hmm. But uh, since then, touch wood, <laughs> no more bites. I do not want to get bitten ever again. It's not fun. Don't get bitten. I can no. imagine. Copperheads are gnarly as well. And of all, of all the places to get bitten, you get bitten over in America, not South Africa, with all those <laughs> yeah. venomous animals. Yeah, I know. That's bad. Um, so what is the most dangerous snake capture that you've been on? I think um, probably one for us was season, I think it was season five. Um, there was Psycho Sally, which we called her. Yeah, um, yeah. Black Mamba that was very heated up. And she the one in nuts. the metal uh, shed? Really bit me. Sorry? Was it like in a corrugate? Is that the one in the corrugated shed? Like a big, big outbuilding, was wasn't it? Corrugated shed? Uh, it? No, it might be another one. Went garage, behind. Something. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Went behind all pallets and like bookshelves and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I can't remember now. Um, but she went nuts. When she came out, she was fired up. She nearly bit me, I think, three to five times. Went for the cameraman. Um, pretty hectic. Um, so I think that's probably one of the worst ones. She was really. She, she was in a bad mood. <laughs> Definitely. Right, okay, so I'm not quite sure if you can hear what we're saying and whatnot because of all the audio issues. Um, but tell us about the last season. What was your favourite moment in the whole season? Favourite moment in the last season, season six? Oh. Coming home alive. <laughs> <laughs> um. That's a bonus. That's a yeah. bonus. 
I don't know. What was it? What's the best one? I don't know. Do you know? It's a bit cliche, but just the fact we're saving snakes, I'm, I live. I love that. Yeah. Do you know what? Every day is different. Like I say, when you're catching snakes, and sometimes you get home and think, "Thank God, nothing went wrong," because it can easily go wrong. You know. And you go, know, guys like us put themselves on their line every day, whether it's us when we're there. Whether, like I said earlier, Susie said earlier, Jason Arnold, Neville Warmerins, Nick Evans, uh, Byron Zimmerman, uh, they're all local snake catchers that all help us when we're filming. Uh, mm -hmm. They're fantastic guys. And they risk themselves every day. And there's no one filming them. Remember that. And I was yeah. doing the same. Susie yeah. was doing the same for any filming came along. Uh, so you do risk yourself. When there's cameras involved, you try and switch off because there can be a hindrance. Yeah. You know, yeah. you've got to switch off and you've got to carry on. Sometimes when you get home, you think to yourself, that was close, that was stupid, or something could have gone wrong, I could have prevented, or I could not have prevented. So, yeah. you, you know, people might say to us, oh, you took too much risk, you did this, you did that. When you're a snake catcher, that's your job, mm. to take yeah. risks to a yeah. certain degree mm -hmm. without getting bitten. So I always say to get everybody, don't get bitten. Take your time, do this, do that. You know, yeah, cameras are around us, you've got to make the show exciting. But not takes chances so it's a, there's a balance that's the end of the day definitely um, got, yeah. guys uh, what's your favorite episode uh that these guys are on in snake city i think mine's got to be the one when simon's up the tree trying to get the green member that's brilliant <laughs> I like, that one. I, I like the one where I think you did have some animals out in Africa at the time and he had some, I can't even remember what it was now, but it was a seriously de uh, venomous snake and he'd open the tank to clean it or change its water bowl and they had a power cut and it went pitch black. Oh God, that was horrible. <laughs> that was horrendous. That one. I, yeah, I, that was fun. <laughs> I could, I I could watch that. Shedding. So in South Africa, we we get a lot of what they call load shedding. They have on purpose power cuts for two hours to save electric, yeah? Um, and we get a schedule, but they never stick to the schedule. So when we yeah. clean snakes out, when we do things, we make sure it's within the schedule, but they never tell us when it is going to go off. So yeah, that wasn't the best moment, having a forest cobra in the pitch black, not knowing where it is, you know? So yeah, that wasn't a great situation. <laughs> what was the um, what was the, uh, what was the tiny, tiny little snake that you found in the toilets? Um, I think it was like a oh. security guard. Yeah, he kept saying it was massive. Little, and it was like, the big, big snake, <laughs> big snake. And he was looking for it everywhere and it was nowhere to be found. And you found it as like a little tiny thing. I can't remember well, what honestly, it was. I saw that when we walked in. Yeah. But I literally thought it was either a, a pubic hair or a hairband. Because <laughs> so it was a little tiny. Snake. And I was looking for a big snake and we couldn't find it. And then I just said, hang on, is, is this it? <laughs> and it was. But his answer was, but it will grow big. So whether or not it was small, it's going to grow big. So we had to get it out. Well, it's not going to grow yeah, big there and then. Yeah, that's mad. That was funny. Funny. Yeah, that's mad. Right, we're going to have to start wrapping this up. We're running out of time, um, which is sad. Um, can can I can... ask a quick question? No, you can't. No, one. It's, it's one. <laughs> Go one on. one question, one question. Um, are they? Yeah, we pretty. we we went and met you on uh, one of your meet and greets last year. Um, you was doing a tour around the UK. I think you went then went to America, South Africa. Um, are you planning to do that again? Oh, sorry, it was the last bit. Uh, yeah, we did our. Sorry, it's breaking up. We did our meet That's and okay. tours. We went global. We went to America, England, and South Africa. Yeah, are you doing and it sorry, again? Question. Are you doing it again? I'll do it. Oh, uh, yeah, we'd love to. Obviously, at the moment, we don't know what's happening in the world. No. <laughs> um, but the minute large groups can get together, hundred percent, we'll be we'll be doing a, a meet and greet tour. Mm. Love to have you guys back on board with us because you've been helping us, mm. and that's brilliant. Well, I'll, um, I've got to say, so that's definitely awful. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to say as well. Um, I owe you two a massive thanks. Um. So me and Mike uh, went down to your meet and greet in Birmingham. Danny, um, Danny couldn't make it; he was too busy washing his hair. Um, <laughs> so we, we did we did that talk. Uh, we brought some animals down. We had a great time, and I actually met my current girlfriend at one of your talks. So Yay! apparently, Simon is yeah. See, Simon's still a black. Um, <laughs> so uh, thank you for. Uh, 
the opportunity. Um, but that is about it for this. The, we're going to have to start wrapping up. We've got literally a couple of minutes left. Um, so for everyone who's tuned in, thank you. If you do want to check out some of our other content. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Def- definitely. No, it's been a pleasure. Uh, if you want to look nice. at our other content, if you go on to reptileandchill.com, you can see all our information there as well. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at the handle of Reptile and Chill. Again, we're just, we're just, Three normal dudes uh, who, who like reptiles, and that's what we talk about, just like Simon and Susie as well. So if you are into reptiles or you do want to get into reptiles or you just want to talk reptiles, get in touch and be part of what we do. That is about it. Simon and Susie, it's been absolutely fantastic having you on the show. Any final words? Thank you very much. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Take Thank care. You. Love you. Bye. Cheers. Peace, Love, you, bye. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Stay safe, eh? Stay yeah. safe.